Week 13 SFL action continues this evening from the eye in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, as the Florida Storm play host to the Canton Classics. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Daggs. Joining me in the booth is Gerald Smith with us on stats, Ron Haynes and Tristan Hatley. You are watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music. Gerald, two undefeated teams going head-to-head tonight. Yeah, and... Somebody's coming. It's, it's another thing, as Matt Wilson would say, the O has got to go for somebody. Absolutely. So we're, we're, we're going to see who's going to have that O go. As we've seen the season unfolds, Canton has looked like the unstoppable force, just absolutely destroying teams along the way. Number one in just about every category you can possibly imagine. Florida, though, they're number two or number three in several categories. They're right up there as well, and they're here at home. Um, wearing uniforms that look like uh, they are currently underwater. But, uh, hey, if anybody's got a chance to beat Canton, it would be Florida here at home tonight. Uh, what do you expect them to see in this one? Well, I'm, 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 my, my interest lies in the number one rush defense of Florida versus the number one rush offense in Canton. If Florida can slow down that rush offense that Canton has, they have a shot, but they're also going to have to be mistake-free and efficient on their offensive side to keep Canton from having them turn the ball over, which has given Canton so much opportunities and gotten them where they are. Well, as Matt Wilson would say, there's only one way to find out, and that's on the field. So we'll get down to the field, get this one started. We're going to see that number one rushing offense here first, Gerald, as Canton will start with the ball tonight. And uh, it's been kind of surreal watching all of these Canton games throughout the season. Every single one of their wins has a margin of victory of two touchdowns or more, most of which have been significantly more. No team has scored more than one touchdown on them. Meanwhile, Florida has averaged about 29 points per game throughout the season, so interested to see how it plays out. First play is an incomplete pass up the left-hand side, and we'll roll through the Canton Classics offense. Quarterback is Scar Patterson, the halfback Robert Johnson, and Logan Lee. Bill Cherry is the fullback. Ryan Owens, Andrew Gibson, Al Dillapree Sr., and Bob Lung are the wide receivers. Jack Wall is the tight end. We'll go through the offensive line after this play. Another pass. This one over the middle. Oh. And it is immediately picked off. Andrew Francis went right to him. And this is what Florida is going to have to do. They're going to have to force the Canton offense into turnovers. And this is an opportunity for them. One t- one thing teams have not been able to do is get a touchdown lead on Canton. Hell, they've only had, what, two touchdowns scored all on them season. all season long. So this is where you're going to see the the in, in this particular situation, especially early on, we're going to see how the Canton defense is going to respond to their offense with this early turnover. Florida, number two in the league in interceptions with 27 on the season, although ironically, that's Andrew Francis's first. So welcome to the party, Andrew Francis. Meanwhile, number one in interceptions, it can. Sir, yeah. here, of course. <laughs> Start off with a run to Charlie the Bullet Boletsky. He'll pick up two. We'll roll through that Florida offense. Ron Cochran is the quarterback. Charlie Bullet boletsky is the halfback. Crix Kamasak, the fullback. Stephen Bush, Caleb Giffis, Art Vandelay, and Bobby Taratino are the wide receivers. The Ron Haynes and Nate LeMay are the tight ends. William Davidson, Joseph Wade, Greg McDonaldson are the left tackle and left and right guard, respectively. Back down to Boletsky, bottled up at the line, and he'll actually lose a yard, bringing up a third down and nine. And Canton has the number three rush defense, only allowing 66 yards per game on the ground. And this is where Canton typically feasts. If it's not in the pass rush they put on the opposing quarterback, it's the interceptions that they actually pick off. So we're going to see how this first pass is going to be from Florida here. Ron Cochran, 15 interceptions thrown on the season on 289 pass attempts, 10th best in the league. We'll try to avoid adding to that total tonight. Throws it into double coverage. That one is incomplete, so only one yard gained on that drive, and uh, it's not going to be enough for even field goal range. Ethan Sneed stays on the sideline. Marcus Agrippa on to punt for the storm. 
Florida had to, in my opinion, they, they had to take it. I mean, they had, they had to come away with some points there, I think. Yeah. And they come away with nothing. Those opportunities, you cannot let slip by against a Canton team like this. Ball bounced down at the 10 into the end zone for a touchback. And just like that, we will reset everything. And uh, Canton will get the ball back just like they had at the opening kickoff. This time at their own 20-yard line. And uh, they'll get uh, a mulligan. So we'll roll through the offensive line for Canton. Jacques Le Pancake and Max Van Linge are the tackles. Adam Chance and Girth Lord are the guards. Kira Kilgannon is the center. Offset eye formation in our first run for Canton on the day. We'll go for a gain of four up the left hand side. And they're holding true to what they do, you know, being a number one rush defense in Florida. And we're, we're going to see how they're going to, because they can force Canton into longer type situations as far as the down and the distance. I think it, it, it might play in their favor being able to force it in because, it, look, if I want, I'd, I'd want Scar Patterson to beat me if I'm the opponent. Oh, Patterson throws it right into the face of big sexy Alex Dominguez. He got ups. He, he got the ups and the width, too. You know, you, you talk, get, you get a, somebody named Girth Lord. That, he's got some girth on him. Alex Dominguez jumping up, swatting that one down. Alex Dominguez has got six sacks on the season as well. It would have been hilarious if he had picked that off and started rumbling forward. Big man running. Delayed handoff. Goes for a gain of four, but that will bring the drive to a close. Tackle is made by Deontay Stoneville, the defensive end. And uh, so two offensive possessions for Canton and nothing to show for it so far. So the Florida defense doing work so far. Doing what they need to do. But this is almost on par with, with what most competitive teams have actually played Canton early on. It's almost like Canton almost beats you into submission like as the game goes on. So this is pretty on par with how Canton's games have been starting, especially against quality opponents. Kick turn taken up to the Florida 38-yard line, Ron Cochran will lead his team back out onto the field only through one pass in their opening possession. And it went uh, incomplete. Two rushing attempts for Charlie Boletsky for a net total of one yard. And uh, that's it. Kenton defense back out on the field as well. Mike All, Jabril Kurse, L.L. Volt, and Neil Rivers, who you're very familiar with, are the defensive linemen. Mark Gronick, D.J. Kilgannon, Kevin Brackett, Dimitri Manzuma, that is the linebackers. Evan Lacey, Frank Bernstein, Joshua Durr, Diedrich Law, Kanye Rockefeller, and King Jamal. That is the secondary. First completed pass by Cochran goes to the Ron Haynes for a gain of nine. Yeah, and that's something that Florida's going to have to do right there, especially in the passing game, right? Throw it where they aren't because if there's anybody in the passing lanes, you know, Canton typically gets a hand on it or, or something like that. They tried to get there, tried to bat it down, but just right up, right out of his reach. Potentially the game of the season, at least anticipation-wise, I think it already has been dubbed the game of the season, 10-0 versus 10-0. Uh, a lot of people thinking that Canton is just completely unbeatable, and uh, Florida, I don't think they have that thought. They haven't lost since week 11 of last season and uh, i don't think they're looking to lose now they've uh, and, and florida's actually had some good fortune go their way too they had a lot of a lot of close wins to this game but hey look a win to win delayed handoff to Boletsky only gets back to the line monzuma with the tackle second down and ten yeah, and they can't and they can't get themselves in this and they have to stay uh, I, I feel like florida as well i mean they're gonna have to stay a uh, you know, ahead of the change, you know, they're going to have to get like positive yards on each play to stay ahead yeah. of it. If not, they make themselves pretty vulnerable to, to what Kenton typically does. Let's get up the right hand side. Makes what do up, I know? Yeah. <laughs> makes up for not getting any yards on the uh, first carry and uh, picks up seven, makes it a third, third and more manageable three. Well, and look, and they got, and they got, and they got two studs back there, too. They got Ron Haynes in the fullback they position. They sure and, do. I and, saw that. And Kamasak lined up <laughs> in the halfback. Cochran will throw. 
Uh, <laughs> gets it up to Stephen Bush, who's tackled just shy of the line of the game, fourth down and in inches. And I'd be tempted to go for it. I, I would. Florida. Go, yeah. I would go for it. I would go. It's it's the second time you get your. Oh, and and they, they are. They are gonna. They are gonna do it. Ron Cochran back out on the field. You got Kamasak lined up in the backfield again. And I feel like they got a little bit of the momentum here, too, as well. Pitch it up top to Commissack. Oh, tackle close. in the backfield, and it will be a turnover on downs. Great play by the Canton defense. Evan Lacey getting the TFL. And they put so many people on a the line there, and he just ran right in free. The, you know, guy there threw a no-hitter. Yeah. Yeah, Blanker just straight up missed. Yeah, the guard just ran right by. Joseph Wade just didn't notice him, and by the time he realized that it was too late, Evan Lacey was already in the backfield. All right, so two offensive possessions apiece. No score midway through the first quarter. Canton will get their best starting field position of the day at their own 44-yard line. Brian Owens in motion up top. Tar Patterson has not completed a pass yet. Throws over the middle, completes his first to Al Dillapri Sr. That one picks up seven. Now Dillapree Sr. Is, is second on the team, believe it or not. You know, of all the guys, Jack Walls actually leading the team in reception this season, but Dillapree with his first catch today. Second down and three. <laughs> Patterson's just going to run it himself. He uh, surges forward for about three and slides down. I think I think I think he wanted to make sure they got that first first down so they can <laughs> get so. that you know you know proverbial monkey off their back and yep. not have to worry about carrying that baggage around any longer. Well, they got it in Florida territory for the first time tonight. Patterson to throw once again goes up top wide open. Jack Wall, as you mentioned, leading the way, gets his first catch as well. Yeah, and they're gonna. And Florida's gonna have to be careful too, like the way they send pressure. If they send pressure, they're gonna have to get there because they do. You know, Canton does a very good job in the passing game of actually finding, you know, their their players open. I mean, you got you know, Scar Patterson has the number two completion percentage in the league right now. Oh, oh does it again and fumbles this time, but it's recovered by Canton, a well-placed La Pancake. Oh, he made like a pancake and fell on it, I guess. Pancake that ball right into the grass. <laughs> but that was another opportunity for Florida. I mean, yeah. I mean they, they, they forced the fumble, just wasn't able to pick it up. Be interested to see if uh, Patterson continues to try to run the ball himself. Ball is handed off once again to Robert Johnson. So he'll pick up another four second down. See, and this is and this is what Canton kind of does, right? They're actually they're their offense isn't overly flashy. They run the ball a ton. And I think they look, look, not that I'm I'm not knocking their run game at all, but a lot of you the, their yardage comes because they've been having such large leads, you know, in in the second half of, uh, half of most games. So, you know, if you can force them in a situation to be more balanced, I think it might fall in the opponent's favor. That pass. Intended for Logan Lee. Broken up by Andrew Francis, who had the interception on the opening possession for Canton. Brings up a third down and six outside of field goal range. So we'll have to, well, are they? They're probably, no, they're at 31. They're right on the edge. Yeah, and they're also in a situation here. You know, on their last third down they had on the previous possession, they actually ran a draw on third down. So let's see what they'll do here. Patterson rolls out left, throws deep downfield, and overthrows his target by quite a bit. Fourth down, and Rob Emms probably will head out onto the field and attempt a field goal for the Classics. Yeah, we might see our first points. It's, it might be about a 48-yarder here, and it is. Kind of wind direction we got happening here. Well, judging by the opening kickoff, they have the wind at their back right now. Kick on its way oh, deep down field. Oh, missed and it. it is wide right. Canton misses the kick and still no score. Two breaks right here that Florida has gotten. He just was wide right. 
He had the leg for it. This is the third possession that, that Florida's getting, and they're actually got it in really good field position here. They sure do. This one starts at their own 38-yard line. Their second best starting field position of the night. Actually, their last drive also started at their own 38. Charlie Boletsky picks up five on that carry, and uh, so far, I guess a, a game of defense as we've seen three possessions by Canton, all of which went for nothing. Uh, now this is Florida's third possession, and uh, we'll see if they can get some points out of it. Someone's got to score at some point. Uh, not only does the O have to go in the loss column for one of these teams, the O has to go on the scoreboard too. Yeah, we can't. We can't be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> so we're rolling into the eleven o'clock block. What? Still zero zero here in Florida. It's got, oh, he had, that was a very good play design. Yeah, he little, didn't pick it up. The long handoff up top to Chris Komasek. Nice swing route, third and inches. Uh, looking on the replay, it looked like he got it. Yeah, it now, was really close. Let's see if they do that pitch up top again. I, I would do a quick handoff. They, they once again go with the pitch. Bolesky picks it up. So this is what they tried to do on that fourth down play with Kamasak, and he couldn't get it. Bolesky, a little, little bit more wheels and uh, gets the first. Yeah, down. he's a, he's he's a bit more agile than than the fullback in Kamasak. And I'm not not knocking Kamasak at all. He's got nearly you know 600 yards on the on the season. You know, and so does Bolesky. Bolesky, you know, is, is, is across the 600-yard mark now with, with the yards he has in this game. So. Yeah. Cochran, short drop, quick pass up top, and that one's incomplete. Can't be, can't be cute, Art. <laughs> Our Two Van, hands on it. Art Vandelay, the intended target, probably should have had that one. A good decision by Cochran just to, you know, do a very short drop and unload it quick. Vandalay well, wide open. Right, um, and if and and the way that they're doing, they're they're actually it looks like Canton's gonna want to blitz bracket off the edge every every chance they get. Delayed handoff to Boletsky. He's able to gain a couple. Brings up a third down and eight, and this is the type of situation Florida does not want to be in. That is a fancy shirt. Man, you know who had a fancy shirt on? Who's that? Greg Soto a few weeks back. With the one with your we face We won that over? game. We may have lost, <laughs> but we won that game. Well, oh, that's, okay. that's a quality shirt. That is a quality shirt. Put that up for auction. Third down. Pressure coming in. Cochran goes down. Sacked back at midfield. Fourth down and 12. Frank Bernstein with the sack. Yeah, and that's what and that's what <laughs> Canton had done. I mean, and you had, uh, I, th I think it was actually Brackett last week, had, what, five or six sacks you know, in, yeah, in, in the last game that they played, he was he was nearly unstoppable. Hey, look, they're bringing pressure from all areas, even from the defensive secondary. So another possession that Florida has gotten into Canton territory that results in, in, in a punt. Three fumbles, or three fumbles, three possessions apiece. No score. There was a fumble on uh, Canton's last possession, but they were able to recover it kind of sort of started a new possession for them, but we'll call it three officially. 0-0. Zero, zero. 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. If you are new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and get your uh, career started or just meet the stars of the SFL both on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved so we're like a a quarter it's two undefeated teams with florida 17 and a half point under dogs yeah that's uh that's a lot for yeah, an undefeated that's team that's more than what i scored last game <laughs> patterson connects <laughs> over the middle and gets to jack wall who breaks the tackle Gets the first down up near midfield. And those are the opportunities that Canton takes advantage of, especially when you start stacking the box. You're able to throw out of that, and that's why Jack Wall has been a guy who actually has the receptions that he does because they try and stack the box without the power run that they have. But 
they throw passes like that and actually gets them down the field. So a pair of undefeated teams who have just piled on points, the number one and number two scoring teams in the league so far this season, and they haven't scored anything through the first quarter. You're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music on YouTube. I'm Mike Dykes, he's Gerald Smith, Ron Haynes, Tristan Hatley with us on Stats. Cameron Irvine, our producer back at SFL Studios. Bo Martin Jr. in the chat says, what if no one scores? Can there be a tie? No, we don't believe in such silly things here in the SFL. There will never be a tie in this league, nor should there be in any professional sport, if you ask me. I don't know, man. You, the, the the people in the North think that hockey, does the hockey still have ties? Or they, Dude, they I haven't watched a hockey game like since I was like eight years old and my parents took you, me to one because they probably, got free tickets. You probably played hockey. Oh, never. What? Listen, just because you're from the North doesn't mean you play hockey. Now, if well, you're you from should, Canada, well, you should it's know. a whole different animal. You should know, know about the hockey. I don't know anything about hockey. Not a thing. Patterson throws over the middle. Double coverage. That one is incomplete. Second down and eight. And they're good. Look, oh, I was going to uh, say there's injury. Uh, okay. Oh, El Dillapri Sr. Does that, does that level off the playing field? A bit? It, it may. I was it's kind of it's it's kind of weird to say because the players laying down there, but seeing how dominant, yeah, that you know, Kenton has been. It, I mean, does it give you know Florida somewhat of an an advantage to, you know, to to actually slow down their offense some? I was confused for a minute when it said second down and eight. I'm like, wait, does that mean it was first and eight? What happened? But just hadn't updated the uh, down and distance due to the injury. So we'll check on the status of Dillapree later on. Keep our eyes out for him. They got to get pressure. It looks like they have some zone here that they're running on defense. Play action. Patterson rolls out right, throws deep down the middle again. Jumping one-handed catch is hauled in. Andrew Gibson. That'll give Kenton a first down deep in Florida territory. Yep, and guess what happens? You actually take that second-year player when Dillapri goes out, you slot him right in, and you throw right to him, and it makes a one-handed catch while getting hit. Easy peasy. I, I guess for him it is, and now they're right <laughs> back where they were. Their drive ended on their last possession with the missed field goal. Only this time heading a different direction. Four down lineman for Florida. Handoff to Johnson, bottled up pretty much at the line. He's able to gain a couple. Second down and eight. So, yeah, no, no ties in this league, Gerald. So they will play until someone, well, until somebody scores. Yes. How yeah. long will that be? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> it could very well happen on this drive. <laughs> it might. It might. Definitely inside field goal range now. Oh, especially after this. Breaking tackles inside the 20. All the way down inside the red zone. Logan Lee with the carry. Logan Lee looked gassed right there. He didn't look like his normal quick pace self there. Looked like he was already gassed when he got the ball. Wasn't running. I mean, that's not the Logan Lee like we're used to seeing. He has a little bit more of a quicker pace to that typically. So, but picked up the first down nonetheless and actually got him in the red zone. Jason France wondering if it's George Costanza coaching the uh, storm. Could be based on that shirt. Wow. He how, did, that? how did he do that? Ryan Owens somehow absorbing I, the football through I wanna, I, other I, players. I, I want to <laughs> see this again. It's like it just went in between bodies or something. Wow. wow. Yeah, he just, the defender turned around a bit too late and didn't see it and wasn't able to get his hands out. Yeah, Patterson just what squeezing a, that in right past two Florida defenders. Yeah, what a what a, what a missed opportunity for Florida there, too, to maybe bat the ball or even pick it off themselves. Five, down, five on the line for Florida now. Patterson to throw, dumps it down, breaking tackles into the end zone. There's your first points. Bill Cherry with the touchdown reception. If I remember correctly, it's only his second reception on the season. His uh, his only other reception, Gerald, a seven-yard touchdown 
catch. And guess what? So. He catches a five-yard touchdown. What he does? Score touchdowns. That's just That's what he does, yeah, you, apparently. You throw it to Bill Cherry, and he will score a touchdown on that catch. Right. And 100% th- touchdowns and, on his and completion. And this particular thing right here is why what is going to make Canton dangerous the rest of the game. Canton now has a lead. They have a touchdown lead, and we know only two other teams have scored touchdown on them all season long through 10 games. Yeah. And... I mean, can Florida be that third team to do it and, and, and go down there and tie it up? I, I, I guess we're going to find out. But they've actually had three opportunities to get them, you know, in in a situation like the world. I mean, had three opportunities to go down there, yeah. and they got themselves in Canton territory, and Canton tightened up their defense and actually shut them down and forced them to punt. They had a turnover on downs as well. So we're going to we're gonna see how they're going to answer because now they're going to have to get themselves in a situation where they have to kind of almost go the length of the field depending on how far they get this kick return. Yeah, taking it at the one. And returning it up to the 24. We'll see what they're able to do on this drive so far. Not a whole lot. They had uh, a one-yard possession on their opening drive. And... Uh, Gained about 18 yards on their next drive. Went for it on fourth down. Couldn't get it. And uh, then only six six yards, excuse me, on their last possession and had to punt that one away. So first things first, let's see if they get to midfield. Yeah, they haven't done a whole lot with the ball at all, even though they've been in Kenton territory three times. Three receivers up top. They'll hand this one off to Bolesky. Breaks through one tackle. Gains seven on the play. Second down. And three. Florida is just going to have to be consistent with how they move the ball. Like, I really like, look, them doing what they're doing right here. G- getting, you know, five to seven on first down is, is going to go, is going to be really huge for them to actually kind of be successful on, on offense. And in my opinion, just because of how dominant Canton defense has been all season long. The Ron Haynes in it fullback again. Cochran hands this one off. Able to gain one more yard, brings up a third down and two. Yeah, and it's why I I, I feel like every single play is really important for Florida. I mean, is it it it, it could be I don't know, just I mean, just as Canton has played, I feel like every yard they get is extremely important to their success. See if we can get the first oh, down here. Sack with broken tackle. Yeah, broken tackle in the backfield and uh, gets the first down. Stepping out of bounds, getting the clock stopped at 631. That was extremely good blocking by the Florida team there because typically when you when Florida when 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 Canton gets a the a player, their defender to the ball carrier, typically there's another player right behind them to be able to clean it all up. But very, very good blocking by the Canton offense right there on that run play for, you know, that way if Comisac breaks that one tackle, he didn't have to worry about anybody else, and he ran for about 12 yards. And off to Bolesky will go for no gain as he only gets back to the line. Second down and 10. Canton Classics fans, the team needs your help. Van Lacy, the father of Evan Lacy, which is the cornerback, named for his likeness, is raising the reward money to help his solve his son's murder from $8,000 to $20,000. The Classics have set up a GoFundMe account and would appreciate your consideration in donating or even just sharing the link in your social circles. Let's help Van keep his final promise to his son and bring peace to this family. Visit GoFundMe.com and search A Father's Promise. They're down in 10, that last pass incomplete. In third and 10, this is situations right right here that, that Florida's not want to be in, and it looks like Canton's bringing some pressure. Watch Bracket off the edge. Cochran under pressure, throws into double coverage and can't get that connection. Caleb Giffis, his intended target, fourth down. And uh, Florida only able to gain... About 16 yards, if my math is correct. 15 yards. Give or take. Fourth down, and uh, Agrippa will have to punt that one away. 
Here again, I mean, they got themselves, you know, at, you know, to the, about to their own 40, and here they are punting again, and this is a situation no team wants to be in, especially against a Canton team who is known for just shutting down opposing offenses and actually, you know, doing... Look, I, I, I'll be honest. Look, I know Canton puts up a lot of points. They have the number one rushing attack league, but I don't think that their offense is overly spectacular, right? I do think that just... You know, on paper, hey, yeah, they have the statistics to be able to do it. Their offense is not what is going to um, beat teams. It's their defense that just smothers it and puts their offense to better opportunities. Patterson misses his target on first down. He's trying to get it out to Ryan Owens. And, uh, yeah, I think the one thing that Florida cannot afford right now is to go down two scores. I mean, it's tough enough right. to be down one score. So and they're and and they're going to have the force turnovers to get themselves in a in a lot better yeah. situation. And they have, you know, for season. their offense. Yes, they have. So and they have in this game. I mean, we started off the the game with an Andrew Francis pick. They're going to need more of that. Let's see if they're able to do it. Second down and ten. Patterson, quick pass, wide open over the middle, gets the catch, but the tackle is made. And they're only going to give him five yards on that. Uh, interesting friendly hometown spot there it's almost like well, i think caught it looked like he on, on, on his own accord just ran backwards slightly three yeah. receivers set on third down and five florida playing up tight That's oh you need. Patterson sacked in the backfield for a three-yard loss pressure got home deontay stoneville gets the sack and that's what you need right there no situations right you gotta apply some pressure to the quarterback right there to be able to get in there and actually shut him down with Stoneville's fourth sack of the season forces Canton to punt and they're looking to get the ball in favorable position for their offense right here so the defense did step up and then force the opponent into a three and out type of situation and now let's see if they their their offense gets the answer back and put some points on the board yeah they're going to need to capitalize off at this time they've they've gotten Canton stopped a couple of times uh, once through an interception, you know, another time forcing him to punt it away. But, you know, they're going to need to get points. And uh, so far, Canton offensively, you know, just pretty much doubling that, well, qu triple, quadruple. I don't know. You do the maths. But look at look at Florida's passing yards. It's only 15 yards through the air so far. Cochran, you know, significantly better numbers than that on the season. He's top 10 in yards, touchdowns, completion percentage, QBR. Yeah, he's going to have to step up and actually do some 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 good right here. Yeah, Bolesky needs to get things going as well as he gains only a couple. Has about 30 yards on the day now. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, over 600 yards now on the season. Chris Komasek about 550 as well. Cochran passes to the Ron Haynes, who's able to gain a bunch and add on to almost doubling Florida's passing air total. Right, and you and if you actually think about it right here, a lot of their success in the passing game, you know, limited, right, this game, has been to Ron Haynes. Why? Because the linebackers, and you know, it, I'll take my chances, Ron Haynes versus any linebacker in the league, to see if he can cover him, right? So I think that's where they need to start looking. Cochran will throw again, tries to pick up the blitz, and it is picked up. Dumps it down to Boletsky for a six-yard gain. Second down and four. Yeah, so looking there, actually got themselves into into field goal range right here. It seems like so inside the 30, the furthest that they have gotten into Canton territory here. So let's you know, look, if they can somehow go down here and finish this drive with a touchdown, it'd be huge. This handoff goes to Chris Komasak. He's able to pick up most of what was needed. Third down and one. As you mentioned, they are definitely within field goal range here. Looking to looking to try to tie this one up at seven apiece, though. So see what they bring out here. I would advise them to not do the pitch to the bottom 
And then set hand this off well, they up get, the middle. They get they have the box full right here. Now they do the pitch down to the bottom. Bolesky trying, rolling. Oh, does he get it? He does. Wow. <laughs> we might we might see another look at that, yeah, but yeah. for right B now it's a first Bolesky down. Bolesky powering through to pick up the first down right there. I don't know. Are they just gonna let it go? They're not they're even gonna let it go. Yeah, they're, they're not even gonna challenge it. Three receiver set, a tight end. And a half back in the formation, Matt Wilson's favorite offensive grouping. Oh, a little shimmy move there. Yeah. Kason trying to put some moves on. Typically, you don't see that type of move from the from the backup. They just happy to get in the game. Just just run straight. Hand it to them. They just run straight. Yeah. Well, he's he learned he learned a little shimmy uh, from the from the bench. Second down and six pitch goes back down to Kamasak. He's able to roll forward. I thought he was going to get the first as well. I Another third down and one as we tick towards the two-minute warning. Yeah, and we're going to hit the two-minute warning here. Sure are. Are you liking the game so far? Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. The SFL produces over 400 events a year. There's nobody else that gives you more football. Don't miss a minute of SFL or SFLM action and help the channel grow through your support. Two minutes to go here from Florida in the first half. You're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music on YouTube. Offset eye formation. Going back to that pitch down to Kamasek oh. on third down and that'll bring up a fourth as the stop is made by Kevin Brackett. And we will see Ethan so, Sneed out to yeah, kick do, field goal. Do, do we want to bring Ethan? Look, I, it, it, we see Ethan Sneed is out there now, but I'm not thinking myself, man, do, do we really want to do that? We've gotten down here. We're yeah. down a touchdown. How many other times are we going to get this far? I already went for it on fourth once and didn't get it. I don't know if I would roll those dice twice. Just throw it to Ron Haynes. Throw it to Ron Haynes? Yeah. We could run it to him as well. Field goal is up and good. We've seen him live, line up at fullback a couple of times. So points for both teams now as Ethan Sneed does the fabled left hook <laughs> with the kick. Gets it through 7-3 to three with a minute 28 to go. Florida will get the ball to start the second half. See if Canton's able to get some more points on the board here in the first half over under for this game set by Jack Santa at 38.5 currently we're not even a third of the way there no and at this and at this pace I don't think we're ever going to we're not going to reach the over under or or nor are we ever going to get I mean look are they going to even score 17 points combined <laughs> maybe First down and 10 from the 23. Ball is handed off to Robert Johnson. He'll only gain a single yard. And uh, another look at George Costanza. <laughs> well, that's what Jason yeah, France yeah, called him. Yeah, why not? Let's just do it. Let's just, call, let's just say <laughs> what it is. Why not? I can, I, I can definitely see it. <laughs> Patterson to throw, swings it up top. And a great oh, oh. tackle in the open field by Evan Carroll. One yard TFL and Canton content to let the clock continue to roll here on a third down and long. I'm surprised Florida hasn't called a timeout. If I was Florida, I would have called a timeout right there. Well, if the clock is still running at the end of this play, I think they should. But it looks like it'll probably be a Scar Patterson throw, and it is. Play action rolls out left, throws left. And it's incomplete, so the clock stops at 34 seconds. That one was close. Gibson had his hands on it, but it was jarred loose. And they're, and they're going to get the ball probably in a kind of a favorable position again this time, right? They're probably going to get it somewhere, you know, due to their punter. The punter isn't kicking the ball crazy down the field, but they're probably going to have possession on, on their own, around their own 40. Punt is away. Fair catch called for at their own 39-yard line. So Dang, that's one yard off. <laughs> it was a great, a great estimate, seeing as you know, could have landed anywhere. 
But so what do you think they're going to do here? Is Cochran going to throw? He's only thrown nine attempts. He's completed only five of them. Boletsky though, Boletsky and Kamasak both averaging under three yards per carry. What do you think? I would, I would go and try to take as many shots as I can right here, right before half. There's only 28 seconds left, and then if you're able to get some points, you get the ball back after half. Cochran will throw, but throws a very short pass to Caleb Giffis. He'll gain a yard and call a timeout. Yeah, I'm asking for the hurry up, and they got a couple of time, a couple. They actually have all three. First down, Jimmy. Second down and nine from the forty. Cochran. Short drop. Oh, quick oh, yes. pass. And that yes. one is complete to Art this, Vandelay. This this right here is what they need to do. And I, I would have wanted them to call a timeout at this point. Yeah, well, they're going to go into the hurry up. Ten seconds to go. Cochran. Oh, oh. he fumbles the ball. And it is oh, picked up it. by Florida. So they're able to recover their own why, fumble, why just did, like Canton did. And we'll probably see the clock well, run out now. Well, well, why did the clock stop? The clock stopped. I'm curious, is there a timeout that was called that we didn't see? No, it's still oh, going. It was weird. Or maybe it's just on a loss of down. They actually waited on the placement, I guess, of the ball. And the last timeout called with one second left, and maybe we'll see a Ron Cochran riverboat run throwing it downfield, seeing what happens. Yeah, yeah, why not? But I would have liked to see them use a timeout right on that play to beta seat because that was about as perfect as you can get right there getting down the field as far as you did before the sack and call a timeout to actually regroup yourself because you had pretty good position almost getting yourself in, in, into field goal range with a couple of timeouts. Cochran heaves it deep downfield and overthrows his target. And that will bring the first half to a close. So two teams with 10 wins apiece manage a combined 10 points in the first half of the game as we head to halftime look at the first half stats and some snapshots of the half gerald your thoughts on the game so far a four-point ball game it's been it's been a defensive struggle on both sides you've got one one squad that actually turned the ball over and the other one just hasn't right and the two defense are actually showing up and showing why they are the top two defenses in the league coming into this week so can they just stay in status quo to what they've done defensively to teams all season long, you know, slowing down the run game, slowing down the pass game, and then putting pressure on the opposing quarterback as well. So, I mean, and in Florida, it's not, I mean, look, they're, they're not out of this game at all. No, absolutely right? not. They, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, they got three points on the board. They actually seem like they're starting to maybe find their footing and start to find a little bit of holes inside the Canton defense for them to start maybe marching down the field. So we're going to see what kind of second half adjustments both teams do. Let's see what happens here in the second half. Florida will get the ball to start the second half. They actually have the opportunity to take the lead in this one if they're able to go down the field and get it into the end zone for a touchdown. But if you look at the first half drive summary, no points scored in the first quarter. Only a couple of drives out of about six combined six or seven drives between the two teams only two of those led to points seven for kenton three for florida i'm mike dykes he's gerald smith ron haynes tristan hatley providing those drive summaries for us as they're tracking stats tonight cameron irvine our producer at sfl studios handling graphics and uh, other such producer activities buttons he's got lots of he's buttons. the button pusher so charlie boletsky takes the handoff to get the first excuse me the second half started 11 carries for 29 yards throughout the first half he'll pick up four there both of these teams with a great rushing defense and it shows in the stats columns as uh Everybody but Logan Lee has uh, got less than three oh. yards per carry. I don't think Kamasak saw like his, you know, somewhat of a small cutback lane. He could cut back to his left and actually had some room, and he may have been able to even maybe pick up the, the first down or, or if not get close to it. He just didn't see it and got caught behind his lineman and 
Only picked up a couple. I think that's what Costanza was just saying into the headset on the sidelines. Jerry, we need a first down. Cochran throws over the middle. That one's incomplete. That was a pass interference by Mike Hall. No, of course not. Yeah, I mean, it was a big body. No, you're allowed to defensive lineman. You're allowed to tackle people before the you know before the ball's even halfway there. You're allowed to bring them down. That was that was that was a mugging all the way to five yards off the line. Like, yeah, wow. I'm surprised. That was uh, that was interesting. That was interesting. I I very surprised we didn't see a flag there. He was stumbling before the ball was even on its way. So the first drive for Florida here in the second half does nothing. And uh, Canton, Bob Lung brings it up to the 42 on the punt return. We'll see what Gar Patterson and company will be able to do. Patterson was 8 of 16 for 80 yards, threw a touchdown, threw a pick in the first half. Jack Wall, the receiver, of choice for him so far. Two receptions for 33 yards. Ball distribution pretty good across the board. Everybody but Bob Long has a catch. We'll start with a running play. That one good for a gain of two. Robert Johnson, seven attempts for 20 yards through the first half. Logan Lee only had one carry, but it went for 12. And this is and this is where Canton typically kind of turned you know you know turns it on in games right it's in the second half where it seems like they get a, a, a nice good chunk of blueprint stuff on the on the opposing team and, and it's actually able to kind of try to move the ball a little bit more a little bit differently but Florida's yeah. standing tall right yeah, here. they moved it backwards on that one right. one yard tackle for a loss it didn't catch who it was that made that tackle. But this is where Florida is going to have to really come out and play right here on, the, on these like downs. It was Ryan Tobin. So, oh, on third down, the pass was caught, but then immediately broken up. Looked like Andrew Francis on that pass breakup. And both teams three and out to start the second half. Yep, and they have an opportunity to pin Florida back in their own territory with this punt here. And, you know, F- Florida, Florida's still hanging tough right here, right? Sure I, I, I don't know if any team has held Canton to just these low of points this far into a game before. Uh-oh. Oh. Breaking tackles and heading down the oh right sideline. Oh, my God, this is midfield. Not only is it what Art they Vandalay. needed, Art Vandalay is going to give Florida the lead. Touchdown, Storm. And they take the lead over Canton. If it's not a turnover, you can do it on special teams. And that's exactly what the Florida special teams did for their squad. This could be somewhat of a momentum boosting thing for their team in the second half. Art Vandalay breaking a tackle at about the 20 yard line and taking it another 80 in for a touchdown to give his team the lead by two. Florida has now done what no other team has been able to do all season long, and that is score double-digit points on the Canton Classics. A 78-yard punt return touchdown for Art Vandalay, and it looked like as soon as he broke that tackle, the afterburners turned on. He was just, he knew right then. He's like, oh, I'm going. I'm going in front of this home crowd. I'm getting this touchdown. The extra point is good officially giving Florida the double digit points and they take a three point lead over camp. And that's exactly what they needed, right? Because their offense isn't quite producing like they want. You know, their defense got a turnover, but the offense wasn't able to produce any points. And here they are. They say, hey, there's three phases to this game. There's offense, there's defense, and there is special teams. We already seen Canton have a special teams blunder with a missed field goal. uh, Florida does on the punt. They take it back for a touchdown to give themselves the lead. We'll see what this defense does now as they are absolutely amped up by that punt return touchdown. And I don't even think I got a chance to introduce the uh, Florida defense in the first half. Deontay Stoneville, Alessandro Tomaello, Alex Dominguez, and Pete Mitchell on the defensive line. Ryan Tobin, Jesus Smith, and Juan Mississippi are the linebackers. Ryan Davidson, Evan Carroll, Adam Jones, Big O Renfro, Daniel Wright, Andrew Francis, and J.J. Bailey is the secondary. Scar Patterson missing on his last two pass attempts, 6 of 10 on the last 10. Back out on the field on offense now. Now trailing. Pass up top is complete, but only for a gain of two. 
So this is this is one of the first times Canton has had to face any type of deficit or adversity. Well, certainly in the second half. In their game. And here they are. We're going to see how they are going to respond because we know that they're struggling offensively to move the ball as well. Patterson heaves it downfield, and he's a little uh, little amped up right now. He's got to rein it back in as that one just goes way past everybody on the field. No one had a shot at it. And They're it, down Nate. And it, and it all starts on first down. Whenever you give them limited amount of yards on first downs, it puts them behind the chain, so to speak. And guess what happens? They're actually in a situation. It almost, it could be just me, but they're down by three. It almost looks like they're in panic mode, and they abandoned the run completely. Yeah, play action. Passing again, Patterson. Ah, put a little arc on it that time, and that, that one's hauled in by Andrew Gibson. Able to get the first down and move the chains. Well, now they got a first down. We're going to see if they're going to kind of go back to the run a little bit there because, you know, because they come out right after that you know they they're down three points all three plays were passes that's, that's something typically we don't see from a canton squad first down and 10 from the 47 yard line looks like a rushing formation robert johnson dot in the eye but they're gonna throw pressure coming to patterson throws and that one was i mean well defended absolutely well defended by florida the uh defensive back just in the way the entire out yeah the defender was actually draped kind of right on the back of the receiver and maybe got a hand in there maybe he just forced an incomplete and couldn't get let ryan owens actually get his hands on the ball and actually try to swat it out so it was actually backup corner mario edwards on the coverage <laughs> that was darn fine coverage from mr edwards leave him in <laughs> they can cover that good <laughs> leave him in yeah Pressure getting through again. Patterson gets the pass out, but I saw holding on the play. I'm not getting too excited about this catch because with yeah, the flag, we'll see what happens. Uh, you never know. Ineligible downfield. Uh, yeah, they're going to call it ineligible downfield, as you said, on uh, on Kenton. Girth Lord, like where? I, I, I didn't I, see I, that. I didn't see it on the on. Yeah, we on just the saw replay the replay there. here, and uh, I did not see that. It looked to me. Girth, Girth Lord did not leave no. the, uh, the line until after the ball was thrown. That, that, was, that was a very, very unfair But I saw ball. Ryan Tobin get thrown down to the ground. That's why I thought it was holding. But Patterson tries to make up for it oh. and does. <laughs> Holy cow. Gets the completion. What a catch. Ryan what? Owens getting Ryan, another big one. Ryan Owens is like, it doesn't matter. I'll get it all back yeah. and then some. I'll fix it, guys on one play and look and 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 who would have thought right here right wow. that canton's actually moving the ball in the passing game right here that's typically not what they do like even though they have you know the most efficient quarterback in the league right now and 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 scar patterson and him being the second highest in completion percentage as well patterson to throw again oh almost picked off and there was nothing but green grass ahead Ah, uh, Gerald, if he had caught that one, it'd be 17-7. Juan Mississippi had an opportunity to turn the game. I don't know if it was a, Juan Mississippi or if it was Ryan Tobin. Didn't get a real good look at it. But it I think Mississippi, it, yeah. But, man, that had pick six written all over it. It was indeed. I formation now. Patterson to throw. Dumps it down. Gets it out to Bill Cherry. And he'll actually lose a yard. Third down and 11. So it's a look, and this is exactly right here what Florida wants. This is an opportunity for them to actually force a turnover. And it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what Canton does here. Patterson to throw. Goes deep down the oh, middle, oh, and it's caught. First down and goal, Canton. Ryan Owens, he's just been making big catches all game long and has another huge one there. Andrew Francis got mossed right there. It got thrown right in his direction, 
He had every opportunity to come down, and he just jumped up right over him and grabbed it. Yeah, right I don't even know if Francis even saw it. I don't know, but that's the nice hands catch brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it. 4K23. See, Florida's going to make some side of a stand because they haven't been, Ken hasn't been running the ball very well at all today. First down and goal. Patterson tries to get it himself, oh, and, he, and he does. <laughs> Canton retakes the lead. Touchdown, classic. Score, Patterson does it with a little bit of flash. He didn't have to jump, but he did find himself open. and says, I'm going to jump in there anyway. And now Canton has retaken the lead. What a way to respond in a situation where they have not had you know, themselves being that, yeah, them, yeah, them being behind on the team, and they actually answered pretty well. And I called them, you know, someone in kind of panic mode, but they showed, hey, look, we not only can run the ball, but we can actually pass the ball with efficiency and do it in a timely manner. Yeah. That, was, that was a really impressive drive. And, the, and Florida had two opportunities on that drive to stop them on a third and long, and they couldn't do it. You know, both of Canton's touchdowns today have had completely unnecessary jumping into the end zone <laughs> as uh, Bill Cherry on his first one had a clear path at the end zone and decided to dive in anyway. Patterson had pretty much already crossed the goal line decides to dive in anyway we gotta we gotta we gotta find out if if, <laughs> if cherry's like a former rugby player because that's what they do when they get in the end zone yeah. there they just dive down to get the the, uh, the score or try or whatever the heck they call it kick return by art vandalay who's he's trying to break some more tackles to get his, <laughs> get his team back on the board to retake yeah. the lead Gets it up to his own 23-yard line. Had a punt return for a touchdown to give Florida their only touchdown of the game. Offensively, not a lot's been going their way. Cochran, 7 of 13 for about 50 yards. Leading receiver is Art Vandalay with one catch for 20. Cochran will throw again, this time tipped by a totally unsuspecting Canton defender who I don't know if he even knew that he tipped it. <laughs> I was about to say, he just kept running. Like, I don't know what. Like, he had no care in the world. Like, he didn't care. He's like, yep, I, he's on a mission. I have a spot to get to. And he still got to that spot. Once it was all said and done, hit him right on the head. Three receiver set. Cochran to throw. Quick pass, oh. and he overthrows Ron Haynes. I seen it, that overthrow, and it, it had an uh, interception written all over it. Fortunate enough for Florida that... Lacey wasn't able to get his mitts on it to haul it in. That could have been pretty, pretty devastating for Florida. Third down and 10. Canton, excuse me, Florida three of nine on third down. Cochran to throw, tipped and incomplete. So after surrendering the lead, they aren't even able to move the ball a single yard. And they'll have to punt this one away to Canton, who now has the opportunity to try to really pile on some points. I mean, I mean, if you even think about it here now, I mean, if we're talking about points against the Canton defense, uh, you know what it is? I mean, the, the opposing offense didn't score that touchdown. That was a special teams play. Yeah. Ron Cochran, as you just saw, now five incompletions in a row, only four of ten. 37 yards on his last 10 pass attempts. And like I said, this is typically when 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 Canton, you know, in the second half and, the, and you know, somewhere in the third where, you know, I know what happened to us, right? It, it, I, I felt like we were kind of in it, right, when we yeah. played Canton, you know, somewhat into the third, but then the wheels fell off. So let's see if Flora can somehow put some extra lug nuts on the wheels and keep them in it. Ball is handed off to Robert Johnson, who picks up four. Seems to be a common theme for Canton on first down. Handed off to Robert Johnson for four yards. Second down and six. Johnson with only 25 yards on the ground. Also has one reception, but that one went for minus one. Patterson to throw over the middle, oh, and that wow. one's nearly picked off. Missed. Yep, opportunity completely dropped. It looked like J.J. Bailey had his hands on it. 
Thing Daniel was, Daniel yeah, Wright got yeah. the replay anyway, so maybe I uh, I don't know, yeah. maybe I can't read. Oh, it's Daniel Wright back there in the free safety position almost almost picked it off. Oh yeah. Never mind. Just like me, can't see. It's old <laughs> age. Don't don't look at the eclipse tomorrow. It's gonna make no. it worse. Yeah. I got my eclipse glasses ready. Patterson throws. Oh. That one's complete for a first down. <laughs> when he threw that ball. I thought that ball was going to a wide open yeah. Jack Wall, but it stopped short. Jack Wall was wide open. I think Jack Wall thought it was going to a wide open Jack Wall. If he could have just put a touch pass on the Jack Wall, would have been still running. But they're picking up these third downs, and Florida is having trouble with them, especially in this in the second half. You know, slowing them down on third down right now. Inside the four minute mark in the third quarter. Fresh headed downs from the Florida 38 yard line. Andrew Gibson moves into the slot up top. Johnson hit in the backfield, but he's able to keep his legs churning and pick up two. The 2024 convention is headed to South Shore Harbor Resort in League City, Texas, just south of Houston. July 12th through the 14th. It will feature live games, flag football, the golf tournament, tailgating, a pool party, and more. For all the convention details, visit simulationfl.net slash news slash convention. There you can reserve your room, see the event schedule, and more as Logan Lee is able to pick up three yards, setting up Canton with a third down and five. And Canton has been pretty good in this third quarter. So it's picking up these third downs right here. And I don't know if they're in field goal range. They're down the fringe of it. Let's see how aggressive they're going to be right here. Yeah, they missed a field goal going this direction in the first quarter. Uh, two yards closer than they are now. So big third down and five coming up. Patterson will throw. And he is wrapped oh. up and sacked. Brought down for a three-yard loss on the play. Sacked by Pete. Mitchell, the defensive tackle. Yeah, it, seemed, it looked like Scar Patterson since that the, the, the pocket was breaking down and was almost tucking it down to run, and Pete Mitchell was right in his lap. Six sacks on the season now for Pete Mitchell, tying Alex Dominguez, the team leader in sacks this season. And that sack took Canton out of field goal range for sure. The ball will bounce down at the one, goes into the end zone for the touchback. So, you know, Florida's defense doing what they need to do. You know, you can see the total yards right there. Canton doubling Florida's production. And, and that's, I guess, uh, leads right into my point. So Florida's defense has kept them in it. Their special teams have kept them in it. Florida's offense has not gotten it done. They've got to start now. Yeah, they get. I mean, the offense has got to step up, like you just said. It's yeah. just that they can't. I mean, their 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 defense is holding them up right now. How long can the defense hold up if the offense can't produce? Yeah, that, not enough for a win. It's, it won't happen. The offense has to do something. The run Haynes gets the catch, gets the first down, and that's what we need to see a little bit more of. I would say, uh, that's Haynes' third catch on the day. Now makes him the leading receiver on the team. Three catches, about 30 yards. Yeah, and what they're doing, they're actually running that route right across like the linebacker right there, right? You know, and it's actually getting right beyond him, but actually right under the safety and actually hitting him on a route as soon as it gets clear. And they're actually getting the ball out quick enough, and it's not allowing Kevin Brackett to come off the edge and actually put any real pressure on Cochran. Cochran under center. Now up at their own 33 and a half. Stephen Bush into the slot. Pressure coming down at the bottom. Cochran does a pirouette, throws, and just, uh, I don't know, maybe he made himself dizzy, but he missed. Yeah, he was, he, and, he, he, and he put a little too much heat behind that ball, too. He just threw it, and it was, he had him open. He had a step. He had him open. He just missed him. Henry, Henry McGee in the chat just uh, joined us and said, yo, just joined. Florida is 17 and a half point underdogs with multiple punctuation marks. And uh, yeah, um, an undefeated team, 17 and a half point underdogs. That's how much Jack Stata 
Thinks, uh, oh, wow. oh, 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 that's how much Jack Stata thinks that Canton is just going to stomp on Florida. But Florida's got a different story here tonight, Gerald. Their, their team, defensively and special teams-wise, has been doing great offensively now we're starting to see some fireworks yeah dude and i and i don't know how stephen bush caught that ball but he did and look and that's one thing florida is actually doing here that a lot of teams have not been able to do right a lot of teams actually drop the ball in those in those t- type of situations when they get you know contested balls thrown their way they're actually getting their hands on it but not pulling them in florida isn't dropping a whole lot of balls trips up top cochran throws over the middle that one's incomplete Tried to get it to Art. Second down. Lynette Cowper in the chat says Florida is the underdog because Canton is undefeated and hasn't allowed double digits. And yes, they have. They Debunked have, <laughs> real time. They have now. They Debunked. certainly have now. It, being uh, underdogs is one thing. 17 and a half points when Florida is also undefeated. It's a little disrespectful. Yeah, a little, a little bit. Um, Interesting. So uh, that pass also incomplete. Should have had that one. Third down and 10. Uh, Cochran kind of dropped that right in the bucket. Needs his needs his receivers to step up. Third and, third and long has not worked for them yet tonight. Yeah, it's the second play in a row where they've actually had their hands on the balls, you know, ball, and haven't been able to bring it in. So they're on a third and long situation. Vandalay moves up top. Cochran under center. Play action. Cochran has plenty of time. Goes up top into double coverage. And that one is incomplete. Just trying to do too much with it. And Florida will have to punt this one away. It also looked like there was a, some contact down there, but they're not calling it. Seemed like they're letting them play a little bit. But it is good stop by Canton, right? Florida looked like they had something under them and just... Didn't have it. It seems like Canton, Canton's done this to Florida quite often. They get across into Canton territory. Canton tightens up the defense and actually forces a punt. Fair catch called for back at the 20-yard line. 42 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Canton nursing their four-point lead. Meanwhile, in Buffalo, the Queen City Corsairs are hosting... The Portland Fleet, Queen City, currently with a 7-0 lead. Approaching the midway point of the third quarter. Patterson throws and gets this oh, one Ryan up Owens. top. To, yeah, Ryan Owens. Owens has been making uh, all sorts of catches. Left and right in this one. His and, fifth on the day. And it's Scar Patterson putting the balls in really, really good spots for his receivers to run right to it. Hitting them in stride, too. Yeah. So, you know, and that's and that's always good right there. You know, 94 yards on five. 18, almost 19 yards per reception. Patterson has all day. Dumps this one down to the bottom. Jack Wall with the catch. And it's gained seven. Yeah, and it's actually, it's, uh, Ken's, Ken's looking good here going into the fourth quarter. Three quarters in the books. Ten minutes remains here from the eye in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Will Florida be able to do it? One quarter left to find out. You're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music on YouTube. Of simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. Update on Al Dilpree Sr. He is questionable with leg cramping. Let's see if he comes back in. Florida hasn't really been able to capitalize off of Canton's offense being down a receiver. And once again, it's back on the shoulders of the Canton deep, excuse me, the Florida defense to try to keep them in this one. Second down and three from Canton's 45 yard line. Patterson tries to get the first himself and does once again. We've seen that about three or four times tonight, one of which went for a touchdown. 
APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library and find the perfect tracks for your projects, visit apmmusic.com. And Ken, putting their foot on the throttle now, is uh, they're just finding wide-open receivers and running, you know, like... Uh, just getting whatever they want on the ground and in the air, doing right. Canton things. When when your defense is out there quite often during a game, I mean, they start to get tired and the fatigue starts to sit in here. I mean, because, you know, the Florida defense has been out there more than their offense has. So, and, you know, Scar Patterson is starting to show, I mean, because they don't even average over 200 yards a game through the air. Canton. Right. But here they are looking pretty good. Oh, Patterson's stats, honestly, um, you know, some of the – the lowest passing totals in the league. He's got the least amount of pass attempts of any starting quarterback. But he's 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 also the second highest rated in completion percentage and number sure. one in QBR. So with the with the pass attempts he is throwing, he's actually doing some good with them. You know, we saw that actually from Ron Cochran last season. He had the least amount of pass attempts and completions and yards last season, but uh, you know, leaned a lot more heavily on. Charlie Boletsky than they've been able to this season. Patterson gets this one out. Oh, that's, what, that's what they needed. Right going there. back the other direction. Evan Carroll gets the pick, and the defense still keeps Florida in this one. Gets the ball at his own 25-yard line. And just when we thought Canton was in cruise control and just going through and sliding through it all, Gore Patterson throws what somewhat some might call a lazy ball up there and allows the defender to actually break on it and pick it off. Yeah. Now, was, now let's see if the offense can actually produce. It's kind of funny. It, it, Carroll, like, you know, kind of reached back, twisted, and caught the ball. But when he caught it, he kind of stood there for a second, like, <laughs> holy crap, I got it? <laughs> that happened. Oh, I should go. <laughs> I did a thing, guys. Ron Cochran. 9 of 22 on the day. 84 yards. See if he can get something going here. 75 yards away from the end zone. They need a touchdown to take the lead. Field goal, and they're still trailing. Charlie Boletsky trying to get something going as well. He'll gain six. Puts him right up at about the 40-yard mark on the day. Yeah, and them being down only four, I mean, I mean, their offense is still open for them to do whatever they want. They don't have to pass it. They don't have to solely rely on the run. They don't have to solely rely on the pass. So they can do a multitude of things, you know, as, as far as the offense go, because there really is no rush. They just got to be effective with the plays that they are choosing on offense. First down by Chris Komasek. He's able to surge forward. Eight minutes to go in the ball game. Two 10-0 teams, the only undefeated teams in the league. There'll only be one undefeated team after this one is done. Boletsky able to pick up another five, and, you know, they may as well go with the hot hand. Right now it's the running game. Yeah, and as long as they're getting positive yards out of it, right? But the... The question is going to be, like for me right here, as they start getting toward closer to toward midfield and get into Canton territory, how are they? How is the offense going to keep pushing through to get themselves in a position to score? Kamasak picks up four. Third down and one. We've seen on a lot of these third and shorts and even fourth and shorts, uh, them line up in an offset eye and pitch it down to that strong side. We'll see. If they stick to that theme, it's been very hit and miss. More yeah. miss than hit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, straight eye this time. I would. I don't know. I'd hang on, hand it off to Big Ron Haynes right here. Yeah, I would too. They're going to go into the backfield. <laughs> Charlie Boletsky says, I'll just run behind Big Ron Haynes, run past him, get the first down, and a whole bunch more. Into Canton territory they go. Florida's on the move. And this is and this is where Florida tends to struggle when they get down there, which is right in this area right here. So I'm going to be interested to see is Canton defense going to re-tighten back up like they have been and force punts somewhere between, you know, uh, the, you know, from the 35 or whatever, right? So we're going to see how they're going to start performing here. 
in Florida instead of I don't know why they're coming out in a passing formation. Their run game has been pretty good in the last yeah. few plays. Yeah, I don't know. That's questionable. Cochran says that's why. We'll just dump it down for a six-yard gain. Second down and four, getting Art Vandelay back in on the action. Yeah, I, I'd still stick with that run game. Bolesky and Kamasak were doing great. Uh, yeah, I, I just I just don't know why you would chance putting the ball in the air, especially when you've taken a couple of sacks. Yeah, in in this game already, that's actually taking you out of you know b better field positioning. Yeah, pitch up top, and uh, that was just. That was a, a tackle for a loss waiting to happen. They'll actually pick up a yard, but they only had one blocker up top, and there was two defenders. So they're down in three. And that was a very, very good tackle. I mean, I mean, Mark Rona got there first to be able to kind of hit him and kind of hold him up, but it's you know he was starting to get carried closer to the to the line to gain, and his his, his buddy came over and helped him out. Cochran to throw. Oh, deep over the middle. It's picked off. Ron Haynes gets the tackle, but intercepted by Kanye Rockefeller, the 17 season vet, two time All Star, special teams player of the year back in season 20. He gets the pick, and Canton will maintain their lead and now re regains possession of the football. Yep, and Ken that's Kanye Rockefeller's 79th interception of his career, and it stops another Florida drive as they're getting down into Canton territory to possibly put more points up on the board. And now are we going to see Canton go down and grind this out or, or, or what? Are Florida going to give them a three and out and get the ball back and have an opportunity? Let's see. Starting off with a Robert Johnson run. Five and a half to go in this one. We'll see uh, how things progress. I would expect that Canton will do what they've been best at all season, and that's keep it on the ground. Yeah, and they're going to, I, I mean, at five minutes, that's exactly what I would do, try to keep it on the ground, only put it there. Or or if, if you're going to do it in a situation like this, if you're going to audible out, I mean, this is where Jack Wall has been dangerous all season. Patterson throws, tipped and incomplete. A flag? What's a flag A flag for? on the play. Wow, pass that's the worst time to call it. I, I don't know. Our first pass interference. I think that might, well, it's not the first flag we saw. Yeah, but, I, Ron, but I, I don't first know. First PI call. I don't know if that's a good call. The ball the ball was hit before it even got near. Like, I don't, does it happen mm. before? The, the contact, yeah, there's contact there by Ryan Tobin before the pass was tipped, but. Uh, ball didn't get that far. The ball didn't make it to him, yeah. So it wouldn't, we can, have, wouldn't we have can just call it uncatchable. By that guy, <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. But, but Canton, Canton has been a factor of that penalty call. Ron Haynes just threw a cup of Gatorade on the sideline in protest. Spiked it like the coach spikes a challenge flag. Oh, and a face mask penalty he tried is to, uh, tried to rip his head off. Yeah, bad goes to worse. Oh. As Pete Mitchell called for the face mask. We'll call it an incidental, so it'll be a first and seven. The proverbial first and seven. You see it once every eclipse cycle. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait another 40 <laughs> years? <laughs> uh, 40, 50 years for, yeah. for another one? The eclipse isn't coming here to Fort Lauderdale, though. Not not the full eclipse, though. You got to be. No, it's passing right over my path. house. Yeah, yeah. You sell any parking spots in your yard? No, indeed, but I will let air out of people tired of parking my yard. That a boy. That's the spirit. Patterson throws over the middle. Jack Wall gets a catch down at the 25-yard line. Canton back in scoring range. A field goal at least makes it a touchdown lead for them. A touchdown on this drive, and it's all but over. Yeah, and it's it's. Look, I mean, we've seen Canton driving earlier, right, on their previous drive right here, and they actually – you know, you know, Florida made a good play and was able to kind of pick the ball off and get their team the ball back. Only for them to turn it back over to Canton, but I don't I, I really don't think Canton should take any chances here. No, Patterson's already thrown a couple of picks. Throws that one over to Jack Wall, oh. breaks the tackle, gets the first down, tackled at about the twelve yard line. With four minutes twenty seconds, to right, go. and then and then what does Florida do? They they tried to send the house and leave a you know Jack Wall kind of 
wide open coming across the middle. And they're and they're at the twelve yard line now. Fresh set of downs. Scar Patterson saunters his way back to the line. Content to let the clock roll a little bit. Robert Johnson picks up three, second down and seven. Another fun fact about uh, the area that you live now. You know, there's a Chevy dealership called Bob Johnson Chevrolet. Yes. Bob short for Robert. Rob Johnson. So could, could be Robert Johnson Chevy dealership. Uh, I just, cannot confirm, but Kenton Kenton taking over the league and Robert Johnson <laughs> taking over Western New York dealerships. What? <laughs> Anderson dumps this one down. Catch made by Logan Lee. Third down and five. And uh, yeah, Florida Florida's defense desperately needs to get the stop here with three minutes twenty seconds to go. Hold Canton to a field goal so that they can try to go get their first offensive touchdown of the day to tie it up. I would I would keep an eye on Jack Wall right here. He's been he's been pre, especially over the middle. Jack Wall has been pretty important this game over the middle and maybe running down the seam. Patterson to throw sends it Jack Wall's way and that one is incomplete. Daniel Wright in on the coverage. No, actually, that one was uh, headed to Ryan Owens. I don't even know it was was Wall in on that play. Yeah, he was. I think he oh, was he's up top. Yeah, I think he was running in the opposite direction. But so Rob M is on for a field goal. Kind of a pretty important one here. Yeah, he missed one from forty-eight. This one from half the distance. Kick from the left hash it is up, and this one he makes. So Canton takes a seven point lead. And now Florida's offense is going to, they don't have a choice now. They, they haven't been able to produce on offense. Cochran is 10 of 24. That's 41% completion percentage for those doing the math. 90 yards, no touchdowns. He's thrown one pick. His quarterback rating is less than Gerald and I's age at 35.1. Special teams able to get things done for them earlier on in and, the game. Caleb Giffis with the then return. And Dennis puts even further back. Yep. Penalties are stacking up for the, on the Florida side right now. They really are, and we really hadn't seen many flags in the game. In fact, we had uh, talked about how few we had seen, and uh, shortly thereafter, the old broadcaster's curse must have kicked in, I guess, because the ref said, oh, crap, that's right, we do have flags. Oh, yeah, we do. We just, yeah. we just, we just forgot to throw them. Making up for lost time, I think. Cochran. He's got to get something going, and not that. Deep pass over the middle is incomplete. Just overthrows his target. The Wiley Ole veteran, Ron Cochran, 14-season vet, five-time All-Star, one-time Offensive Player of the Year. He's got to settle down and do what he's done countless times in the past, move his team downfield on the final drive of regulation, get him into the end zone, tie it up. Yeah, and this is, and this is where Canton usually feasts right here, right? When, when, when teams have to rely solely on the pass. Yeah, makes it very one-dimensional, so we'll see if they're able to capitalize off of it. Cochran to throw again. Pressure on its way. Almost got there. And uh, they almost capitalized indeed. Evan Lacey got his hands on the ball. I think he probably would have been able to get into the end zone. But it falls harmlessly to the turf. And another third down and 10. We talked about the third down percentage earlier on. And it hasn't gotten much better. I think I said it. they were 3 of 9 on third down at that point. Now they're 4 of 13. They've only had one third down picked up in the second half. Sure have out of five attempts. See if they can convert this one. And they're going to throw it short. Get half, not even. I was going to say, if wow. they got half of what they needed, that'd be one thing. Art Vandelay gets the catch. And now with two and a half to go, they're going to go for it on fourth down. 
And uh, and they're booing. Yeah, the crowd, not a fan of this decision. I guess maybe they wanted to see him punt. Cochran. Oh, and a sacked. Sack. Turnover on downs at the 12-yard line. And that might be game. Frank Bernstein gets another sack. We saw him get one earlier on a blitz. This is what the these what what kind of accent was that? This is what this is how Canton has won their games. The defense has been so tough on opponents that you know if you don't score in any other creative way, they yeah. just smother you to death and they end up you get in end up getting in the situations just like this where sure do Canton is very possible gonna put up a you know another score. Batters a touchdown right there, touchdown, Canton, Jack Wall. You asked for uh, Canton to look for him on that last drive. They say, well, hang on. Let's wait for one more possession. They get the touchdown there. And now and, they take a uh, two-score lead here right. with 217 And, and that's what happens. Teams late in games get into desperation mode where they have to throw at Canton, feast on it, and this is what happens. So, I mean, it's, it's what it is. I mean, look, it, it, Florida, yeah, they got down there far enough. Many teams have to be able to kick a field goal but their offense was not able to get down there to score a touchdown. They got that touchdown on a punt return by Art Vandelay, and it just shows you, you know, how Canton is, is, is doing things on defense. You have to score in creative ways. If you cause them to fumble, you better pick it up and run it back. If you get an interception, you better run it back for a touchdown because, you know, I, I just I just don't think that, you know, to this point, I mean, it's, I mean, what, touchdown-wise, offensively, they've had two teams score touchdowns offensively on them and if you're just speaking of touchdowns in general this is the third in 11 games let's talk about that fourth and seven and they have all three timeouts at that point they're only trailing by a touchdown you could you could you could punt you you go for it and you don't get it you know you're turning it over in prime scoring i mean scoring range field goal range minimum but not only did they go for it and not get it, they got sacked and made it a easy 12-yard touchdown catch. You know, it, I'm surprised that they went for it there. Especially, uh, I mean, Ron, that that pass right there is Ron Cochran's day. Um, Brett Solberg coming out of left field, giving us some uh, extra stats. I don't know if he's hiding in the stats truck. Or maybe he was just in the bathroom. Nobody noticed him, but all maybe of a sudden coming out of the blue. followed us because he wants to eye up the, uh, <laughs> on the way back home, wants to eye up the eclipse or could, something. Could be, could be. Crazy he's a Canadian. He's throwing the stats out there. Cochran is only 2 of 12, now 2 of 13 in the second half after going 9 of 15 in the first half. And uh, completes that one to Ron Haynes. But when you're only 2 of 12 in the second half, you don't go for it on 4th and 7 inside Canton's red zone. Two-minute warning. Here from Florida, the storm trailing by two touchdowns. Fresh set of downs, they're on the move, but just haven't been able to get anything right. going offensively. But, but what do you do, right? They couldn't do it even when they wasn't in their own territory. They couldn't move the ball to be able to produce so many meaningful points in terms of actually off on the on the offensive side. So what do you do? I mean, I, it almost feels like you know every yard has been a struggle for Florida to actually be able to pick up so and and it's it's just what Canton has done all season long they've just been outmatched every opponent their defense is so dominant that I I, I really don't think this this was their I guess biggest toughest test and it could very well end in a two or more score victory for Canton which that's what has, they have you know been all season two or more scores yeah, Cochran getting that one down to Ron Haynes, picking up five. We'll call a timeout. Their first of the second half. Got some more SFL action coming up this evening, and one final game of the week tomorrow night. Join Cam and Tyler for SFL this week, Monday at 7.15 p.m. Eastern before tomorrow's big rivalry between Indianapolis and Minnesota. Nice jumping one-handed catch by our Vandalay. We'll move the chains. They'll call timeout number two. There's major playoff implications in the Indianapolis-Minnesota game. Excited to see that one. Kickoff will be at 8.15 p.m. Eastern time on SFL YouTube. And uh, 
some South Division action coming up later on as Houston takes on Arizona and Mexico City takes on Alamo City. Cities. Cities as far as the eye can see. Cochran throws this one up top, gets the catch, calling their final timeout. We'll have a second down and six coming up. Cities sound better than river. I'll just leave that there. You just stop it. I will unplug your microphone, sir. So I just I just don't see you know, it, the, the the freight train that is that is Canton being stopped by anyone. It's not looking it. Uh, you know, I mean, Florida held their own in this one. As uh, Kevin Brackett inadvertently, accidentally gets a pass deflection. He's like, I don't pass coverage. I, I rush the quarterback. Yeah. He's like, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I'm just going to stand here and get beamed by the ball. And it will add to my stat line. <laughs> They're down in six. So, yeah, I just... Florida's gotten right here multiple times during during this game, but they've but this is where it, it it has stalled quite often. This might be something. Yeah, Stephen Bush gets the catch, steps out of and bounds out at of the bounds. thirty, minute thirty five to go with the clock stopped. Gets a fresh set of downs out of that one. I I thought he had like a I saw him miss it. You know I had avoid that tackle i didn't think there was anybody left i thought he was going to maybe take it in and we could have been like oh onside kick time stephen bush with his third reception on the day 28 yards now i mean but they're they're slowly marching down there i mean he just I, I just don't think they have the time to get it done but who who knows man anything can happen here if they throw actually a big play i mean they're, they're not they're not stretching the field by any means because they're running out of time and have no time out they are they are cochran Quick pass, tried to get it out to Vandalay, let him just a little bit too much. Cost them four seconds. Here we are. Second 10 and this. Look, there, there's, there's no quitting Florida. I mean, they're the defending champs here. You know, four, five, four times champions, I believe they are. So, and I mean, they don't want to lose either they, they they want to keep this streak up and take it all the way to championship five wide threw that one right into the waiting arms of king jamal who could not secure it but it brings up a third and 10 minute 28 to go in the game four down territory of course so two more attempts coming up yeah ron had to throw that with a little bit of touch a little bit of arc and just kind of drop it in there instead he just threw it a little bit too hard and threw it right past ron haynes Trips up top, Cochran, oh, pressure on its way. Somehow doesn't get there, and he gets the completion. <laughs> Bobby, I, was just, I was just looking at Mike. Oh, he was right up on Rod Cochran, and he's like, I made it here. Now what do I do? <laughs> I was so close. Cochran dumps this one down short. Tarantino had the first down catch. Good for about a 12-yard gain. Second down and seven. Cochran. To throw oh, oh pressure got there that time Neil leveling rivers him. yeah Neil rivers with a sack there third down and 13 from the 23 everybody gets set and cochran spikes it to bring up fourth down and i don't agree with that now I, I don't know you you would think from a four-time champion an offensive player of the year a gazillion all-star appearances to his name that he would be like yes we need every down to try and get every possible yard we can to score and he spiked it just wasted a down I, di I didn't i didn't understand that yeah i don't know it all comes down to this now cochran to throw gets it out to run haynes who doesn't get there comes up about a yard shy turnover on downs and no timeouts remaining means that canton's just two kneel downs away from getting their 11th win and florida will lose for the first time since week 11 of last season. The reigning champions go up against the Canton Classics, who have looked unstoppable all season and continue to look unstoppable tonight. I don't know who or how anybody would be able to stop them 
from winning it all. I, I, I think this was the best possible um, team to actually knock them off. Yeah. And it took a special team's punt return for them to get their touchdown to get, you know, to get them to, you know, get a touchdown on the board. And, and I just, I, I, I don't see anybody even competing with them because if this is the closest that, you know, an undefeated team and the defending champs can get to them, I just, I, I don't think anybody can because, I mean, Florida's beaten everybody that has come across them. I mean, I mean, I mean, just like Canton has, and I just don't think that this Canton team is is going to lose to anybody, and it's going to be by two plus scores from here on out. I mean, I, I I hate to be calling stuff like that, but I really do think that they they are by far the 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 favorites to take it all the way to the championship. The second fewest points they've scored all season long, 24 to 10 is the final. They've only scored 24 points one other time, and then all the way back to week two, they only put up 20 points against Indianapolis. Uh, Gerald, as we see the final stats, your final thoughts on this one? Uh, it's just the Canton defense. I mean, the Canton defense just shuts everybody down. Look, and, and Florida made a valiant effort in terms of stopping that rushing offense from Canton, and they kept Canton from doing the things that Kent typically does on the offensive side of it and scoring a ton of points. But Florida had lots of opportunities with a couple interceptions and got plenty of opportunities once they got down in the Canton territory to do something, but the Canton defense shut them down every single time. Canton will improve to 11-0 on the season. Florida will fall to 10-1. Next up for Canton on Friday, April 12th, they will host the Jacksonville Kings. Next up for Florida, they will host uh, Carolina Skyhawks on April 13th. Coming up next at 9 p.m., Houston at Arizona. At 9.15 p.m., Mexico City at Alamo City. So don't go anywhere. More SFL action coming up next. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music. Canton wins it 24-10. For Gerald Smith, Ron Haynes, Tristan Hatley, Cameron Irvine, and Matt Wilson, Who's always with me in spirit? I'm Mike Daggs. Thank you for joining us. Be kind to one another. Always choose happy. Have a